um, discussed uh, the mobilization of technical expertise uh, through the CSP uh, in, in, in the prioritized countries that, that, that were um, requesting support. Um, as part of that, we, we went through a bit of an overview in terms of the type of technical support that the GTFCC has historically provided. Um, and, and some of the key points around that were to, b between, I think it was 2018 and now, the GTFCC has, has deployed um, technical support uh, 34 different times. 53% uh, of those deployments were focused on, on OCV, um, you know, relating to um, the planning of vaccination campaigns as well as the implementation. And the average length of deployment was approximately five weeks. Um, uh, we, we, we went through um, some potential sources for um, technical support for the country support platform. And, and so that included ideas around developing an expert pool through partnerships with GTFCC partners or independent institutions like um, academia, universities. Um, uh, we also uh, discussed the idea of collaborating with existing expert pools. So things like um, WHO GORN, um, and also the need to balance um, uh, support needs from countries which were um, more short-term, so things focused on, on, on outbreak response and longer-term needs um, to really support the development and, and implementation of, of um, uh, NCPs. Uh, in terms of some of the key points that came out of our discussion, I think one is to note that there was uh, a lot of enthusiasm within the group um, regarding the potential uh, for the CSP to really provide strong technical support uh, and help to coordinate other partners um, uh, in order to meet the needs that countries have. Um, there was certainly collective agreement that the platform um, uh, uses existing mechanisms to deploy TA to avoid duplication and ensure high quality, which some of these other initiatives have already um, uh, done a lot of screening in terms of the experts that are involved to, to ensure that quality. Um, there was a note that um, the CSP hasn't quite determined exactly how it will leverage these other existing networks. And the group noted that, that having these discussions and starting to build out ideas about how it can collaborate with these other initiatives should be a, a, a key near-term priority. Um, there was also uh, uh, the need that to, to clarify exactly who at the country level can request TA from the country support platform. Is it only national governments or does this include in-country NCP coordinators uh, or, or other partners that are involved in color control? And there was also a need to think through how um, decisions will be taken in, uh, in terms of whether or not to provide TA uh, that a country has requested and who is the decision-making authority within, within for those requests. Is it the GTFCC, the working groups, the CSP itself? Um, Separately, uh, I think that everyone agreed that there were a number of different technical issues and, and, and subjects that, that countries had different TA needs for. Um, but there was also strong acknowledgement that um, besides things around epidemiology, vaccination, WASH, case management, that topics like financing, management, and logistics were other key areas that um, the CSP should, should ensure that it is able to provide support to countries for. And finally, there was a, a, a note that um, there are some emerging uh, and exciting um, communities that exist that, that are working on defining how to um, provide capacity building in innovative ways. And um, uh, those, should be, those should be leveraged when possible. Um, so that's sort of a summary of our discussion, but I'll let William or, or David comment if, if I've missed anything. 